Hi friends, welcome back to Faith Foster Fire Life. Today, let's talk about how to prepare your home for your first foster child. If this is the first video that you're coming across on our channel, welcome. My name is Val and my husband Pat and I have been foster parents for the last 12 years. Recently, we closed our foster care license after the adoption of our second son from foster care, and we wanted to share our experience on this platform to educate potential foster parents and to inspire others to help kids in the foster care system. So the goal of this playlist, which you can find below, is to do just that and answer some of the most basic questions that we've heard over the years. So today's video is to answer the question, how do you prepare your home for a foster child? Often times when people are thinking about becoming foster parents, they want to know if the home they currently live in is adequate for fostering. And so today we're going to go through some basic things that will let you know if your home is ready for a foster child. So number one, do you have to own your own home? No, you do not. You can rent, um, you can own your own home, um, you can even live with other people. Now. Keep in mind that whatever, whoever you live with, whatever other adults are living in the house, they have to go through the same process that you have to go through. So if you live with grandparents, aunts, uncles, something of that nature, you do have to um, keep in mind that they're going to have to go through the same requirements that you will have to, even though they're not directly the foster parents. But you can live with other people, you can rent your home, you can own your home, you can live in any type of home. You can live in an apartment, in a single family home, a um, mobile home, um, lots of different varieties of the type of home that you live in. So that can open up the door for a lot of different kind of foster parents. The next most uh, commonly asked question is about bedroom size. And so people want to know, is their house big enough? So the square footage of your actual home doesn't matter as much as the bedroom size matters. Most homes um, have to have at least 50 square feet in their bedroom for per child. So that means if you're uh, fostering and you have one child in that bedroom, you have to have at least 50 square feet. And to give you an idea of what that looks like, that's pretty small space, that's a seven by seven room. And then if you were to have two children in that room, you'd have to double that. As long as you can meet those requirements for square footage, then you're good to go. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that bedroom cannot be in a basement or an attic. It does need to be on the main living area of your home. That can be on a second floor where most of the bedrooms are, or if you live in a single level home, then the bedrooms have to be on that main living floor. You would wanna keep in mind too that you may wanna keep your foster children close to you as the foster parent. So if you have a home where the master bedroom is on the first floor and your bedrooms for the children are on the second floor, you wanna keep that into consideration because you may be in a situation where you wanna be in earshot um, or just close proximity to your foster child. But that's something you have to decide once you get there and make those adjustments as needed. Now let's talk about what's in that bedroom. The rule of thumb is to keep it as simple as possible. You want to make sure that you have a bed, of course. Now, most kids are going to be completely safe and suitable to have a twin size bed in that bedroom. Of course, if you have a baby, you're going to need a crib, but you don't need to go and have a crib on hand, a toddler bed on hand, and a regular you know, twin size bed. If you have a crib, for the infants and a twin size bed for the older children, that's sufficient. Of course, you're gonna make modifications for a toddler, maybe put a side railing up on that bed, but a twin bed is usually the best bet. Aside from the bed, again, keep it simple. A bedroom has to have a closet in it, so you can forego a dresser or bureau if you want to, because you, if you have a small bedroom space and you wanna keep more floor space open, as long as you have a closet to store their clothing in, that's completely sufficient. Or you can go ahead and add a dresser or a bureau, something extra to keep their belongings in. Keep in mind, most foster children are not going to have an abundance of clothing. They'll probably come to you with nothing, just the clothes on their back. So 
whatever you are purchasing or getting donated to your foster home um, is probably all you're going to have so you probably aren't going to need a ton of clothing storage other than that in the bedroom you may want to have a desk if you have a school-aged child so they have somewhere to do their schoolwork uh, you could also add in something for toy storage, either a toy box or shelving. And keep in mind again that you're going to be held to the strictest of safety standards. So if you have a shelf or something that could get tipped over, it's going to need to be um, bolted to the wall to be safe for any child that enters that room. Now, another area that you want to be prepared for is the rest of your home, your home in general. So let's go over just a couple of the basic things you need to know about preparing your home and your property. So number one, your home has to be in good general repair. You don't need to live in a mansion with granite countertops and crystal chandeliers, but you do have to have a safe home. So that means that your home is not going to be in any kind of need of repair, especially for safety things. If you have stairs in your home, make sure the railings are in good shape. The stairs themselves are um, in, in good repair. You don't have any major construction projects going on. Now, I will tell you that we have done many construction projects, home repair projects over the years while fostering, but we've never brought in a child during one of those times. I mean, anyone who's lived through a home remodel knows that's a super stressful time as it is. So the last thing you want to do is add a brand new child to the mix and have them live in that as well. So we want to make sure your home is in a calm <laughs> and safe condition when a child moves in. Again, you're also going to want to make sure that your home can pass some basic inspections. In Rhode Island, you have to pass a lead inspection and that requires a company coming in and testing the wood and paint in your home. You're also going to often have to pass a water inspection and that's going to be the water quality of your, of your home, whether that's um, town water or a well system. And they'll also check when they do your home inspection, they should be checking the temperature gauge on your water heater to make sure that that's not too high. You also have to pass a fire inspection, which would include working fire, smoke, and CO detectors on all levels of your home. And the fire inspector may also go ahead and check the square footage of your bedrooms in addition to the social worker doing that. And you also have to have a working fire extinguisher in an easily accessible area. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is along the lines of um, childproofing your home. Now you may be thinking, you know, you have to cover your outlets, put safety locks on kitchen cabinets, things of that sort that you would do for any um, childproofing, but you're going to have to do some things in addition to that. One of the major things that we didn't realize before we got licensed was you have to have your medications locked up. This is, of course, for the child's safety. You're going to have kids who come into your home that may not be um, familiar with what medications look like, even simple things like Tylenol. Even though they have that child safety cap, you do have to keep all of your medications in a place that's up, out of reach, and potentially even locked up. Um, if you have any prescription medications, those have to be logged, at least in our state. We have to keep a log of our prescription medications, and that's to ensure the safety um, of all the people in your home against prescription medication abuse. So especially if you're taking in um, older children, you know, middle school, high school age, you wanna make sure all of your medications are locked up. And then younger children who don't know any better, of course you never want them to get their hands on any kind of prescription medication. Another thing that you have to keep securely stored and locked is if you're a gun owner. You can own a gun in most states. In Rhode Island, you can be a legal gun owner. Of course, you have to show that you're a legal gun owner and that your weapons are um, properly registered and all of that. And you also have to show that you store them properly, that you have a gun locker with a key that is out of uh, reach for any children and that your ammunition is stored separately and of course if you are a gun owner then you should already be um, educated in how to properly store your your guns anyway but that is something that you have to keep in mind so now let's talk about the outside of your home again just like the inside of your home the outside has to be in good 
repair. So you're going to have a home that doesn't have um, chipping paint or um, things that need repair like window sills and all of that sort of thing. The uh, ways you enter your home have to be safe as well. Um, stairs that are secure, doors and locks that are secure. And in your yard, you have to make sure that, you know, your trash, recycling, if you have any kind of like a fire pit, um, something along those lines, everything is nice and secure and safe. God forbid a child were outside playing or wandered outside and they had access to anything that could harm them. And that goes uh, along with chemicals as well, especially if you're a pool owner. If you own a pool, your pool chemicals have to be stored somewhere where children cannot access them. And same thing with your pool, you have to have a pool fence that is a safety pool fence, not just a regular chain link fence that a child could climb over. You have to invest in a safety pool fence. And I will go ahead and put in a clip here of our pool fence and show you exactly what I mean by that. So ours is a specific, um, fence that children can't climb over and then the locking mechanism on it has um, you have to be a certain height to be able to pull the top of it up to release the latch in addition to that it has a locking mechanism and that's really important because little ones they may not be able to climb that fence or get up to pull it open but older kids that you want to make sure you're with them while they're in the pool area can do those things. So um, you wanna get one that can lock and then you only have access to that key. So pool safety is of major importance because there have been way too many um, child drownings and that's the last thing you wanna have to worry about as a foster parent. So this may seem like a lot of information and a little bit overwhelming, but I promise you, if you just take it one step at a time, you'll have your home prepared for your foster child before you know it, and it won't take you too much effort or too much money to get it done. And remember guys, these kids are worth it. So if you put a little bit of effort in on the front side, it'll make your foster care journey a lot easier as you go forward. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that these tips helped you and please leave in the comments below any other questions you have about foster care. We are really an open book and want to help you guys along that journey and dispel any kind of fears and questions that you have. So go ahead and leave those down in the comments and we'd be happy to help you and answer the best that we can. So thanks so much for coming along to our Faith Foster Fire Life journey and remember guys, love God and love others. Thank you.